the third episode of Dora Homes Real Estate Talks, where people come for the information and they stay for the community. I'm your host, Betty Gonzalez, and thank you for being here this morning with me. I have a question for you right off the bat. Have you ever wondered about the intricacies of title services in real estate? Well, wonder no more because today we have a very special guest joining us to talk about just that, Angela Banegas, someone with a wealth of experience and and expertise in the world of real estate and title services. Angela has been an integral part of the real estate industry for over a decade, and she is currently working at Partners Land Services. Her journey in the field has been nothing short of impressive, and we are thrilled to have her share her insights and experience with us this morning. Welcome to our third episode of the Homes Real Estate Talks. Angela Banegas, good morning. Good morning. Thank you so much. I am so honored that you asked me to be on the show with you and that I'm here with you. <laughs> I love what you're doing and I just, I so believe the same thing that you do, that the more information people have, the easier the process will be. A lot of people keep talking about, you know, what does it, what does it take to do this? Uh, what is the process? And Angela, before we get into the title services and what a title company is, uh, it is such a pleasure to have you here with us today. Could you tell us a little bit about yourself, where you're from, how long you've been in the business, and your journey into the real estate services? Thank you. Well, as you said, my name is Angela Banegas, and I work with Partners Land Services. We are a Florida statewide title company. Um, I started my journey over 20 years ago. Um, I started off as a processor, um, the person who starts the research and opens the files and does the dirty work. And I moved my way up in the ranks. Um, I am a Florida licensed title agent. I at one point owned my own title company um, just at the height of short sales. So you can imagine how it was in the trenches. Um, and I found it's easier to sign the back of the check than it is the front. Um, <laughs> after that, I worked with a company for over 10 years. I stick to, to my guns. I like to stay with somebody. I don't like to jump around. And I've now been with partners since they opened and it's wonderful. I really, really enjoy title. No, you know what? It's interesting because yes, we, we all have different jobs, but I don't, I don't foresee somebody like when they're 10 years old, you know what, when I grow up, I want to be a title officer because people just don't know about it. So it's really interesting to know how you, you know, how people get into this business. You know, and one of the ways I did get into it was because a friend of mine was uh, an attorney and she introduced me to it. And you're right. Who goes to school and says, I want to be a title agent when I grow up. I mean, you go to parties and people say, oh, I'm an attorney. I'm a plumber. Everybody knows what those jobs are. I say, I'm a title agent. They, oh, great. Good. They have no exactly. <laughs> and it's funny because what we do involves what people are probably making the biggest purchase that they'll ever make. It is, it is, it can be nerve wracking, but it is so incredible that there's people that I tell people all the time, I couldn't do your job. I don't know what a surgeon does all day long. <laughs> exactly. And then this is a great segue. Angela, for those new to the real estate process, what does a title company really do? <laughs> it's so funny. I used to sit at the table when I did closings and I would go through the numbers and I'd say, do you know what your title insurance premium is this is what it is and do you know what i do do you know what my job is we've spoken on the phone several times no i don't i really don't know what you do so that's when i do take the time to explain title insurance is extremely important my job i don't represent a buyer i don't represent the seller i represent the contract and i represent the property in a sense my research is on the property itself i make sure that when the buyer is purchasing the property they're not purchasing a lien they're not purchasing a headache they're not purchasing a judgment if somebody buys a property today i want to know that they are working on their halloween decorations and not dealing with anything that popped up unknowingly after closing 
My job is to make sure that if there's anything attached to the property, that we pay it off at the time of closing. I make sure that you don't have HOA violations that roll over, that you're not purchasing somebody else's property taxes. We make sure that all of those items are taken care of, are on that final settlement statement. And to be sure that we do that, I give you an insurance policy. And okay, okay, okay. I don't want, I don't want, to, I have a lot to unpack before you go to insurance policy. Is that okay? Yeah. <laughs> yes. Okay, so you said a lien and judgment. Mm -hmm. I know this sounds very familiar to you and me, but for the regular viewer out there that might have never purchased a property, what does that really mean? Great question. So a lien or a judgment, these are scary words too. Um, a judgment is, for example, after somebody has gone through the process of being sued, they failed, they lost, and there's a judgment against them that attaches to their property. So if your seller, John Doe, uh, was sued by Jane Doe and owes $50,000 and it's attached to the property so that if John Doe sells that property. Jane Doe has that assurance that that judgment is attached to that. And she's going to get paid at that time of sale by Mr. John Doe. And that's why that judgment's there. If it's overlooked, John Doe is still responsible, but it's attached to the property. And John Doe is no longer attached to that property. It's now attached to the new buyer. So, okay, so 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 let me so let me see if I understand this. So let's say I'm buying a property from you, right? Yes. But you have a judgment for whatever reason that you went to, to the court, and then they put a, a they put a judgment against your house that now I'm buying. If if title if a title person, i.e. you or you know title agent, does not look through that and then I buy the property, now I owe your debt because it's attached to the property, not you? Correct. In fact, and the best way to exemplify this is people who thought that buying houses cheap on the, on the court steps was yes. so Thank wonderful. You for covering that. Yes, go ahead. <laughs> people who, and, and this is, is just such a perfect example. You know, people who go and they buy the houses because, oh, there's uh, $7,000 in taxes that if they pay that $7,000 in taxes, they're going to own the property. So I'm going to run to the court. I'm going to buy that property. Well, they failed to mention that there's a first, second and third mortgage that's also attached to that property that you just purchased. That now when you go to sell, unless you somehow end up on the court steps again, there's nobody who's going to give you sufficient funds that's going to cover that for you. You have now purchased a debt and that is the risk that you run if you do not purchase title insurance. Okay. So, okay. Thank you. So, okay. So judgment, we cover judgment, but, but lien, a lien could be more than just a judgment. Could you cover a little bit on that? Liens could be, and my best, the best way that I can say this is a lien scares me because I think city, I think municipal, I think county, those kinds of things accrue, <laughs> which Liddy, city, liens, counties, and accruing are all very dirty words. Uh, uh, Angela, I, I don't even know what you mean when you say city, county, and accrue. So a lien can come from official capacity I, I you know I like I said I think of cities um the city of Brown the city of of Miami or you know of um Doral if for example something is not proper on the property itself and if it is overrun for example the the, the property has not been taken care of it's not been maintenance the city can put a lien if it is ignored. That lien doesn't just sit there. They really want you to take care of your property. So they're gonna tell you, if you ignore us, we're gonna fine you $100 a day. So that will accrue. That little lien can become such a huge problem if not dealt with properly. Uh, okay, Angela, I understand. Now, I'm glad I asked that question because I did not like 100% get it. 
Got it. Yeah. You mentioned city and county. I know that the city and the county can uh, put it in on your house, but now that you explain accrued is because over time, if not taken care of or paid for, it can mm -hmm. accumulate penalties. Absolutely. And quickly. But could, could you give me like a small example, if, if you could remember of one, of what could a city put a lien on your property for? Well, and actually I did have one for uh, maintenance. It was not an abandoned property, but a property that was an investment that they just simply were not taken care of. Um, and I think that they had rented it out and they had to evict the last people that were there, the last set of, of, of renters. And they left the property in a, in a state um, since they were going to sell the property. They weren't caring for it. They weren't cleaning up after it. They just wanted to be rid of it. In the process, um, there may have even been an abandoned vehicle. The city started leaving notes and fines and tickets and said, take care of this. And they sent letters, but because the seller wasn't concerned and just wanted to get rid of the property, they ignored it. It even went so far, I recall, to go in front of a magistrate. And that's when it gets in front of a magistrate that they get very angry because they feel ignored. And they would like, number one, the property be taken care of because just for the sake of the neighborhood, the value, your neighbors, everything. Right. But then on top of that, um, it's, it's not being rectified and it's being ignored. So in order to get their attention, um, the, the magistrate will say, well, if this is not taken care of by X date, from here on out, there will be a penalty of, and I've actually seen $100 a day. So, so no, without being too intrusive, like how much did you say that came out to <laughs> at the end of the day? It was a $15,000, it was about 15,000. It was something as simple as an abandoned vehicle, overrun grass, trash, just, just like that, just like that. And the person probably didn't even know or wasn't aware if they were sending the bill straight to the property itself, for example, or if they sure. just decided, oh, well, I'll sell it. Uh, and then if the new buyer does not look into that or doesn't have proper search, they could uh, inherit that bill. Absolutely. Not only that, but even if it's paid off and not properly closed, my job doesn't ever stop at just the closing. I have to make sure that once we send that money in, once we've rectified the, the that situation, we've, we've crossed all of our T's and dotted all of our I's, that we get something in writing that says the same. And that's recorded so that when our new buyer goes to sell, we're not rehashing this. We're not researching this again. We've taken care of it. Got you. Uh, okay, so I have another, uh, out of the first sentences that you got, you got so much, it was so much to unpack. So what do you mean, like, if there's an HOA violation to the property that that attaches to the actual property? Could you elaborate a little bit more so that, because, for example, in Doran, all of our neighborhood have HOA, except oh. for one. So, so this is very important for this audience right here. They want to know, what do you mean by that? So very, very good question. HOAs are an animal in and of their own. Um, I always say that we're in the wrong business because we send them a paper questionnaire and they charge for it a couple hundred dollars. And it is extremely important. Um, the documents are time sensitive and estoppel, which is what the name of the document is, is what protects our buyer. It asks questions such as what are the fees that are paid? How are they paid? Monthly? Quarterly? yearly are there any assessments that are currently uh, in process are there any assessments that have already been approved that are in place uh, are those assessments being paid in a one-time payment in monthly payments uh, we've had assessments to the tune of hundreds of thousands of dollars so it's very important to figure out who's paying it how it's being paid any single thing that has to do with an HOA is not attached to the seller. As soon as that seller signs that deed and our closing is complete, anything remaining with the HOA is now the burden of the new owner. Oh, it sounds a little scary, but could you um, elaborate a little bit more about the document stopping? Like if anybody here that, what yeah. should they think of? 
so estoppel, they should think of protection. Um, that is that is the document that we put together that asks all the questions. It's almost like a mini interrogation. And we make sure that there's nothing on that HOA account once that property is sold. We have everything up to date. We inform the HOA of the new owner's information to be sure that there's no hiccup in when the next payment is due. I personally, not all escrow officers, but I personally like to uh, collect the next month's or quarter's assessments so that the buyer understands what that's for. And the reason I do that is because when you're going through numbers, as much talk as we do, nothing is more important than numbers. When we get numbers and they see, why am I paying my HOA now? I don't own it. That's when I take the time to uh, to take the opportunity to explain this is what's going to be due in the future every month. We've taken care of it here. So at this point, we can explain it. This is where you'll send your payment. And this is the contact information for those parties. And we make sure that it's a nice, clean slate when the buyers purchase their home. Now, this is so important that you cover this, especially because when, uh, I don't know if uh, our viewers know this, but when you go um, buy, purchase your first property, a lot of times you don't pay the very first month. You kind of skip a month a month and a half or so for your first payment. So you think you don't have to pay anything, then you could easily forget <laughs> that you have to pay your HOA dues. So this, you know, is, I, this is great. I liken it to, or I compare it to, you know, public storage would always say it's a dollar for your first month. Well, it's prorated. It's not really a dollar. You're not getting anything for free. And so I also go over that as well. The reason it feels free is because of what you're bringing to the table for funds to close. And that's exactly why I explain how those funds are used and how and where the buyer is responsible to pick up the ball and continue to make those particular payments. Yeah, to us to settle in, they like, okay, so we have to pay this, this and that. No, no, that's great. Okay, so you, so I did, I did, I uh, took notes as you were start, uh, talking and you already covered what you said, the judgment, uh, the city, the county, the accrued amount. Uh, you, you, you uh, told me the stop what do you think you need to think? You said you need to think about security. Yes. Yes, security. And then uh, the one last thing, because you mentioned property taxes. And the reason I want to talk about this is because my father always listened to TikTok and social media. And he knows I'm a real estate agent, right? So, so hey, my name is Betty, but my family calls me Wendy. So he comes, Wendy, <laughs> Wendy, look, people have bought this house uh, for the taxes for 10000 You see, people do this like, I know, papi, they're not telling you the whole story. They need to see about other liens and other judgment. And I explained that to him. And sometimes I be, I think that it goes over, the, over their head when I'm trying to explain to them or they believe that I don't try to help them. Or they uh, want to hear it because it's not what they would like to hear. <laughs> So it's not, it's, they, they send it to me all the time. Like, look at this, look at this, look at this. Like, okay. <laughs> and I look at it and I don't always reply. And when I was like, did you see what I said? He's like, yes, but this is X, Y, and C. So could, so property taxes. So why do they say this all the time? Like I bought it a tax liens. And, wh and what are they not telling you? Like, obviously you already touched on it, but I just wanted people to associate that with what you're about to say. So, and it's really, when you said tax lien, again, there's the word lien and we're looking at taxes, which is county. So I, lien always scares me. It's really official. It's really, it's a heavy, heavy word. So property taxes in Florida are paid in arrears, which means right now in my home, I have not paid taxes for the year 2023. And the reason is because it's not available for me to pay yet. My tax bill will not become available until November 1st. So that means all the homes that are purchased up until November 1st are working with numbers that are based on last year's taxes. There's no way to theorize mm -hmm. where our So we have to, per contract, work from last year's taxes. 
people who purchase homes in Florida, unless they're escrowing with their lender and their lender is paying their taxes for them, they don't realize that the taxes are paid behind. So they purchase their home and think, well, my taxes for this year are paid. Of course they would be. Nobody takes the time to explain they have not been paid yet. So then they get a tax bill. Then they think, well, I've already, it's, I just bought the house. It's fine. <laughs> and they ignore it because they know, they know for sure it's paid. And it doesn't, it, I always say Florida's behind. We work behind. So what happens when a bill is not paid is it sits there. And Florida doesn't have people sending out invoices and reminding you. They'll let it sit there. And then you'll pay your taxes for 2024. You'll think it's 2024. The other bill will still be outstanding. They're not going to continue to remind you. You're going to have an outstanding year. After that year becomes, I believe it's seven years old, it becomes a lien on the property where somebody it will be able to take all of those years, pay it back to the county, and take the property. Wow, it, I, I, very, didn't know, I did not know this. This is so good. So it's a very long process. They have the information on websites for the counties, but it is like playing with fire. <sighs> If the taxes haven't been paid, do you really think anything else has been paid? <laughs> exactly. And and when you purchase it, they're not giving you a title search. I do, because that's what I do. <laughs> <laughs> but when you buy a property from the tax collector, they're concerned about their lien. And that's all their concern is. Yeah, they, all, they only want to collect on what the taxes that it's owed to the county or the city. Everything else is everything else. Now, let me also give you just a little, it, it, don't want to scare anybody, but just the same sort of information. HOA, if you do not pay your assessments, HOA is almost like an, an uh, well, an HOA is an official, an official works in an official capacity, but I liken them to a city or county because they hold just as much weight. They can foreclose on you as well if you don't pay your proper assessments. And again, this is not something that you fail to pay Monday and Thursday, you've lost your house, nothing like that. But if you've gone eight months to a year without paying and the attorneys have sent letters, they will start the process and just the same you think oh my god i'm paying fifty thousand dollars which is a huge amount of money for a condo that's worth even four hundred and fifty thousand. so i'm paying a good amount but i'm still getting a wonderful deal the hoa is only concerned with getting what they have they're not worried about the taxes or the other mortgages yes angela and that's just just to touch on that because they've been fusing attorneys then all of the attorney fees are added to that debt as well. Absolutely. And I'll also say, um, I can do everything that a title agent is supposed to do. I can do everything that an attorney does in a real estate transaction. The attorney, of course, has other capabilities, and that is the ESQ behind their name and what they get paid for for those other services. Having said that, Attorneys don't always do as much as title companies and attorneys don't always do lien searches. And when real estate gets very, very busy, attorneys will not do a lien search because it is not an absolute requirement per contract. They can do sort of a pencil search. They can check and make sure, but a lien search, a full lien search. And we have waves of sellers who there was a heyday, they purchased their home, they had a, um, a an attorney who did the closing, they felt comfortable, they thought it was superior service, and then they find out the attorney didn't do a lien search and there was an open permit from before they bought their house that they had no knowledge of. And we see it, like I said, in waves because the attorneys get to push quickly and by overlooking certain things this education that we're giving people now is invaluable not, not doing 
I don't, I don't mean to cut you off, but I just don't want to let this go because people, since you just mentioned it, it is not mandatory. It is not mandatory to go through title company in the state of Florida to purchase a property. However, uh, because, okay, because people don't understand it and they, and the, at the same time it's not mandatory and they're dealing with an attorney, they believe they're protected. Not only that, title insurance for an owner is now not mandatory any longer. And it okay. And well, you touch this. When you touch this, this is my next question. This is a good segue. <laughs> this is not. This is a good segue. What is? I wrote it down. What is title insurance? And can you explain the importance of title insurance for homeowners and how does it differs from other types of insurance related to home ownership? And yeah. now, and why does uh, it's not required for for owners or sellers like you were talking about now? So, and, and it really, it hurts me. It hurts me when I see a buyer going over their numbers and they, they're concerned about their numbers and they look at title insurance and they see a fee and the title insurance fees are very nominal. They are not excessive at all. In fact, as compared to what you were touching on yourself there with the hazard insurance or even comparing it to auto insurance, these are things you have to pay continuously, monthly, annually, semi-annually, however you make your payments, but you always you continue to pay these things for the time that you have your property your your auto you pay title insurance once it is good for the life that you own your property and the reason is because i insure you from today backwards whatever mess you make on your own moving forward is yours but I ensure you from today backwards, there's not going to be anybody who's going to come knocking at your door saying, I have a, a lien against your home. You can say, call Angela Venegas, I partner's <laughs> type, because you know you don't, because she's done her job and gave me an insurance policy that I never have to pay for again that says the same. Title insurance is worth every dime, every dime of it. Okay, so look. So just to, to make it real, <laughs> I want to give my own uh, experience. I, I don't know if I mentioned this to you before. And I know I haven't said that to none of my audience before. Let me tell you guys. I myself experienced with my last purchase. Mind you, my husband and I, we've purchased, let me see. Uh, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight houses together. Well, seven. The first one was myself. But with this last purchase here in Miami, in Doral, so I just happened to purchase a resale property uh, that's in the corner that used to be a model home. Okay. And it, and, it's, and it was, I guess, attached one, two, and three together. And it seems, based on what happened, <laughs> it seemed to have been bought together by an investor at the time that was sold. And through the link search, I bought title insurance, nothing came up. This property went to auction and an, in, and an investor bought it for $100,000 worth of whatever it was owed, right? And you know who put the, the, the lien? The HOA put the lien on the property and that's what it was sold. Now listen up to this, <laughs> Angela, this is so great. That has it touched everything. It touched everything that you just mentioned. And it's just good to wrap to wrap it up with this. So so after we've moved into the property, well, let me back it up. I am a veteran and I'm able to use my VA loans. My husband is a veteran. He's also able to use his VA loans. However, he has his VA loans attached to other properties and so do I. So because I'm a veteran, I'm available to purchase a property through Navy Federal Credit Union, 100%. And it's treated almost like a VA loan. <laughs> However, it doesn't have the interest rate that a VA loan has. They like almost double, right? But, I, but, but at that time, they were really low. It was 2.5 or 2.8. And we got ours at 4.75. And my husband said, uh, mommy, that's how she's like, listen, Put it into perspective. 4.75 is still pretty low. Uh, so, okay, so he's like, okay, let's move on. Let's move forward. And then we refinance. 
So I was doing all of the paperwork to refinance, which was going to shed like a thousand dollars off of our current mortgage. Perfect. When we get this big thing saying, you're going to go for, um, they're going to take on our property. How do you call this? I, the word is, is escaping right now. A foreclosure. We're going to foreclose on your house because you own $250,000 to this ex bank, right? Remember, the lien was only the person, the investor only bought the lien for $100,000 for the HOA and taxes on the court. And they failed to pay the $250,000. However, they knew it was owed and they were hoping that we took on it, but we had title insurance. Have we not had title insurance, Angela? We would have to pay the $250,000 that was owed to the bank. And the reason that, that the lien search couldn't find it when they did title search was because I guess it was bundled into three houses and it came out after. And because we had title insurance with the people that we bought title, we uh, had to go to court and wait for a whole year until everything was settled. So we couldn't refinance, which is okay. I mean, it's okay. When you think how interest rate is almost at 8% right now. So yes. That's the power of taking action, right? Because we could have paralyzed. Oh, we don't want to pay 4.75. But now we're better off now than if you yes. buy. You know, but this was titled all in perfectly. And this is my personal, my personal what? experience. Hey guys, I am telling you, you need is not a maybe. Even if it's not required, you need to purchase title insurance is for your own protection. And like Angela just said, he uh, protects you backwards, not for something that could happen, but for something that already happened that you might have not known that it happened and it is yeah. against your property. So <laughs> I want to be mindful of your time. And with this, I wanted to wrap it up. And if you have any last minutes, things that you would like to to mention is there anything else that you that you wanted to take out um put out that i didn't ask you well first um i, I wanted to say i could have talked to you all day this just felt like so awesome and <laughs> i also you and your husband for your service thank you very very much oh thank you for your support <laughs> absolutely absolutely and anything that you have questions on anything you need anytime please give me a call um and i i look forward to answering any of the questions that your viewers might have. Okay, excellent. Guys, I know I, I failed to mention that if you had any comments or any questions throughout this interview, you could have you you could have dropped it off because we <laughs> were actually live. Now, Angela, where can the viewers find you? Well, I'll give you my email and I'll spell it out. It's my name, my initial and my name, A Banegas. So it's A B A N like Nancy. E G A S at Partners Land Services. And uh, we are online as well. My cell phone number, in case anybody needs me for anything, texting as well 754 701 9075. And you can always contact Betty to reach me. Well, thank you, Angela. Hey, guys, thank you for tuning in. And if you didn't catch us live, Please watch this replay. And if you replay and, and you love what Angela just said and you have any extra uh, uh, questions that you have for her, please drop it down in the comment below because when she comes back, and she will, then we will, be, we will be able to answer your questions and specifically tailored to you. Again, Angela, thank you so much for coming to my third episode of Dura Homes Real Estate Talks. And I can't wait to see you back here. See you guys in the next episode. Bye-bye.